All right, church, we're continuing through the one another. So let's get started. Mark 9, 50 says this, salt is good, but if the salt becomes unsalty, with what will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Now, Jesus is saying this to his disciples. The, the transfiguration has just happened just shortly before this. And now he's sitting here and he's having some conversation because some things have come up with some people and some situations and the disciples. And so he's talking about being salt. Now, to talk about this in context, the verse prior to this in verse 49 says, for everyone will be salted with fire. So we believe that when he's talking about being salty, we're not talking about being salty because we're angry. He's talking about be salty because you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so when we come and come into faith of what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross, when we call out to him, he fills us with his Holy Spirit. And then we get to become witnesses in our community, in our homes, in our workplaces, the places that we hang out. And, and God's talking about this. Jesus is talking about this with his disciples. And he's saying, salt is good, but if the salt becomes unsalty. What will you do to make it salty again? Now, and he says, have salt in yourselves. Now, what does salt do, right? Like, why is, why is Jesus talking about being salty, right? And so you got to remember there was no refrigeration uh, at the time. And so salt was a main use, was one of the main uses was for preservation. And so did you know that because you were filled with the Holy Spirit of promise that you also get to be a spirit of preservation? Yeah, that's right. You get to be a spirit of preservation. Because of what God has done in your life, you get to be a, a spirit of preservation in your workplace and in your home and your area. There's here, here's the reality is sometimes you preserve meat by putting salt on it. That piece of meat is dead. It has no life in it. And there are people around you that are walking around spiritually dead and you get to be the salt of preservation. You get to go out and minister to these people. And then not only is salt preserving, but it is also purifying. And so what God has done in your life, he has made you holy he has made you righteous, not by your own merits, not because you do great things. It's because of he did one great thing, covering our sins, uh, imputing righteousness to us uh, because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And now we get to go around uh, sharing the purif purification, the holiness of the gospel. We get to be that witness, that Holy Spirit that goes out into our homes and into our workplaces, into our areas of influence. And then what else does salt do, right? Maybe uh, it, maybe you cook a good steak and throw a little salt and it adds to the flavor. It brings out the flavor of that item. And you may think I'm crazy. My wife likes to make uh, Brussels sprouts and broccoli. We put olive oil on it and throw a salt and pepper on it. And it brings out this amazing flavor. I thought I would never like Brussels sprouts. And maybe you could be a Brussels sprout to someone else. And you're saying, oh my gosh, that's terrible. But the reality is the Lord wants to use your flavor, your specific flavor of how he's created you to be a witness to those in your home, in those in your workplace, and in those in the places that you hang out. And then lastly, he says, be at peace with one another in Mark 9.50. Do you know right after the transfiguration we find in uh, Mark chapter 9, we find that the, the disciples are walking around and they are arguing with one another. And Jesus finds out and he says, what are you discussing on the, land, on the way? And they keep silent. And so what we find them doing is arguing with one another. And then right after that, in John 38, we find out that they say, teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to prevent him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not hinder him. And he continues on to say a few more things. But here's the reality of it. Be at peace with one another. Here we find the disciples right after this great moment of the transfer, transfiguration. Obviously not all of them know it, but there was a few of them. And they were still partaking in this conversation, this argument of who's greater. And then even an argument of who can share the gospel because maybe they're not necessarily following after Jesus or their group of disciples. And so here we have 
Jesus saying, be at peace with one another. How often do we find ourselves not being salt, not being salty because we are spending time arguing amongst ourselves or even arguing amongst the church? And so how about this week we decide to be salty? That's right. Now, don't walk around with a frown on your face, but be salty with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And everywhere you go, bring purity, bring preservation, and bring flavor in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe it's not Brussels sprouts. Maybe it's a steak. Maybe it's your favorite fa flavor. But today, this week, the Lord is calling us as a church as we take this verse and we try to live it out in Mark 9, 50, to be salty to have salt in ourselves, to be filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit so that we can purify the area around and we can preserve and we can add flavor to those in our lives for the name and the sake of Jesus Christ. And so that's the call this week. That's the challenge this week as we continue through the one another's. So may the rest of your week be blessed and may you be a blessing and be salty, purifying, preserving, and adding flavor. Blessings.